color mixing in watercolor, you can make any color with three colors, red, blue, and yellow. We are going to learn how to mix colors today. Red, yellow, and blue are the three primary colors. These three colors mixed together will make any color that you could possibly want. And so color mixing or the mixing of colors in watercolor is, it's a really important thing to understand. I've got two sets here. There are different brands, but they're very common uh, colors, no matter what brand you use. So on this side, we've got permanent yellow, ultramarine blue, and thalo red. And on this side, we have cadmium yellow, cobalt blue, and cadmium red. Let's start with our cadmium yellow. Now, um, I'm just gonna kind of create a, a wash here of yellow just to all you do with a wash is you just uh, add water and then you can go back and um, if you want to add, make a gradient of just a, one color which is all I want to do because I just want to keep it in the is you just take that dense color and you add it to one side and use your water to smooth it out I designed this video for the real beginner in watercolor for the person who doesn't know much about mixing, who doesn't know a lot of watercolor techniques. So in addition to the mixing, I'm going to be throwing in a lot of beginner watercolor techniques. So there's my yellows. You can see they're very similar. Let's go and do uh, on the right, we have cobalt blue. Now that this has had a chance to dry a little, it's a little greenish tinge to it. So there's a little more yellow and cobalt blue maybe than cadmium, we'll see. When you want to make that gradient, you just take the paint off your brush, get a wet brush and pull it from the bottom into the color and you can pull out the saturation and that will give you that gradient. And then let the dark color fade back in. Um, push it a little bit there, but I don't wanna push it too much because if I add water now at this point, that's when you start to get those flowers blooming, um, which I might get anyway. So if I wanna avoid that before it dries, I can go back in with my, um, kind of drier brush, I don't know. At this point I'm gonna get them no matter what. I might have to add a little bit more paint to avoid that, but that's okay. I just pay attention as it's drying and if I don't want those flowers, and what I <clears throat> mean by flowers is that as watercolor dries, if you've added water to, um, to the pigment while you were painting, sometimes that water will spread and create kind of a, a texture and I it looks like a flower so I I actually really love that and sometimes I will um I'll leave those because they I think they add a beautiful texture but it just depends on you know your painting and what you're working on go in and do our ultramarine blue it's a very very popular blue I love this blue um, and you can, you're going to see immediately the difference between cobalt blue and ultramarine blue. The ultramarine blue is, has more purple or, uh, has more red in it. And the, uh, cobalt blue has more yellow in it, I think. There's so many different blues, there's so many different yellows, there's so many different reds. You know, how do you decide which one you're gonna get when you wanna just pick those two? So there is our ultramarine blue, and now you can really see the difference. Let me zoom in on that. Okay. 
okay. So you can really see the difference between these two blues. This one has a lot more yellow in it. This one has a lot more red in it. Let's go do our reds. So on this side, we've got our cadmium red, which is a very, very popular red. I find it very orange. I think it makes a good mixing color, um, but right out of the tube, it's not as red as you are expecting it to be. I think when you add the word cadmium to anything, you are expecting it to be one of your main colors. But what is cadmium? What does that even mean? So cadmium is a, it is a uh, ingredient that is added to reds, yellows, and oranges to improve the vibrancy. Um, it, I mean, by itself, it can be toxic, but you shouldn't eat paint anyway. Um, but it is uh, used as a, basically as a tint to improve the vibrancy and the life of a, of a paint. So let's go look at thallo red. This one is called vermilion. Again, just a off brand, but uh, it's also in the kind of orange category. Like again, it's an off brand. It's just called red, number 406. Your color is not gonna be true in watercolor until you have let it dry. Okay, we're gonna do some mixing. Here's what I have. Uh, yellow and blue, yellow and red, blue and red, and then I have all three here, yellow, blue, and red. I actually forgot one of my combinations and I didn't uh, get the combo there, so, but that's okay. So we're gonna do yellow and blue first. So I'm gonna put some yellow. Here is my yellow blue mixture. Yellow and blue, as we all know, makes green. So this is the green that I get when I mix these two together. Now, if I added more, let's make this a gradient. If I add more uh, yellow to this, I am going to get uh, a more of a yellow green. So let's do that. If I add more blue, I'm going to get more of a blue green. So let's put our color right in the middle here. Okay, so what I did is I just added a little bit more yellow there and add even more. So you shouldn't do that. You should wash your brush before you stick it in the yellow because now I'm gonna have to uh, get more yellow out of my tube to keep it pure. And now if I want to get a nice gradient here, it's all about the water and uh, just going to blend those. Pull that in. Okay, so you go from turquoise to green to what we call yellow green. So let's go try that over here with our thalo red and our ultramarine blue. There's a really nice middle green there. Okay, so that's gonna be my middle green. Now look at the difference. Here's my middle green here, which I kind of messed up when I put the palette over it. Do that. Um, very different color from this middle green and I'm just gonna add more blue to it. Okay, and you know, here's my blue-green. And now I'm just putting a little blend in between them, making a very, very light green here. I'm just gonna add a lot more yellow to make a real yellow green. Now this is very, very yellowy, it's very, very green. 
Now the colors, when you mix them this way, rather than having a tube color, will separate sometimes. Notice right here how these, how the colors have separated to the edges. Um, personally, I love that. I think that is the coolest. Now, I, I damaged my paper there, which is why that's doing that when I rolled over it with this. Um, I think that's one of the things that makes watercolor really special over something um, else like colored pencils or, um, you know, any other type of, va you know, when you're coloring with something, watercolor has some very unique qualities. So I'm over here. My cadmium red. Okay, now remember darker colors, you don't add as much. So I'm gonna grab my cobalt blue and I'm gonna add that to my cadmium red. Uh, this is not very purple, it's a little bit more, well it is, but it's very, um, because of the orange quality of this red, this purple is much more brownish. I love this palette. I love porcelain palettes for watercolor. For one thing, they clean up so well, opposed to plastic palettes, which, I mean, they're fine, but these are just lovely. Okay, this is my dark. Now this is much more of a purpley eggplant. Well, it's not even eggplant, but it's just kind of a really dark blue, dark sky blue, which is kind of a stormy blue. It's a very pretty color. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to go with, um, what is this again? Thallo red. Which is much more purple. Ultramarine blue. <laughs> Mixed just a tiny bit with thallo. And there's purple. That's what we've been looking for. That's a much better purple. But isn't this interesting? If you hadn't, if we hadn't practiced this, look at how these are not very different, but look at the difference here. We're going to do the permanent yellow deep and the thallow red. Take my orange here, just to take the orange I already made, and I'm just gonna add red to it and make it darker. All right, very vibrant orange in the middle here, but not a lot of red on this end. Okay, now for the fun part. We're gonna mix all three together and see if we can get a good neutral. Start with my blue. I'm gonna add a little bit of red. Again, this is not even uh, colors. So remember we got a really, really nice purple when we did that before. Now the opposite of purple is yellow. So on the color wheel, if I were to add yellow and purple, I would get a neutral. Um, so that's kind of the whole theory behind color theory is the three colors put together make a neutral, but they make a different kind of neutral. They're not the same. So if I ma mix yellow with, uh, its opposite, then I'm going to get a different you know, which is purple, I'm gonna get a different neutral than if I mix 
red with its opposite, which is green. Um, now that's directly from the tube. So when I and, and so that's the thing. I'm going to get a very different neutral here than when I mix these colors too. So so you want to see kind of what it needs. I feel like I see orange in there. The opposite of orange is blue, so I'm going to grab a little blue. So that's just what I do. I try to see what color is dominant, and then I try to add the opposite of that color to balance it out. Let's see if I can get it as dark as possible. There's just only so much you can do. Um, and that is probably where, as, where it's going to go. This is still a little purple. So here is what I've got. Much, much deeper color. Uh, this is a great neutral. It's actually closer to black than anything um, from over here, which was definitely closer to brown, which is interesting because it's much more of an orangey red, but I don't know, you can never really. So what can we do next? Um, I have literally drawn, painted a, this here, a simple tree trunk, which is like literally practically two lines, okay? Um, and I am going to look at my color chart and decide which greens I'm going to use to make my tree. Easiest type of thing to do in the world is to paint a tree in watercolor. So I really loved the greens I got with the cadmium uh, blue, the cadmium yellow and the cadmium red, uh, cobalt blue, sorry. So start, right, I'm, here I am. Okay. I'm using a very, very big brush. This is called a mop brush. When you're watercoloring, it's always a good idea to start with your lightest color because uh, you can go darker, but it's harder to go light. It's almost impossible. So um, in a tree, there's gonna be light parts and dark parts. So I'm gonna start with my lightest parts. And here I've just got a super, super light uh, yellow green. And I am just gonna think about the sun shining from here. And I am going to just make my sloppy tree very sloppy. And if there's mixed colors on here, that's quite okay because there's lots of colors in a tree. That's why I love a mop brush. You really, really cannot mess up or it's all gonna be messy and that's fine too. All right. You can see that it's doing some of the flower uh, blooming that I mentioned before. Uh, if it's not too dry, you can go in and get rid of those by just using water. That's because the colors are separating a little bit and there's a lot of water. I It was a very uh, wet, wet on wet technique I was using at that point. So, But you can go in and fix that up. If you don't want, a lot of people don't like those flowers. I don't mind the blooming, <laughs> blooming watercolor. So my tree has dry a little bit, but I'm gonna go in and add a little bit of water there. And uh, let's see, I'm gonna go in now with my colors and get a different green, same, same colors, just I'm adding more blue and more yellow together and just doing a, creating a different color. 
could always just tap in just a touch of orange or red, and that will uh, dampen that green a little bit too. So I'm just still just using the same three colors. The bottom of my tree is gonna be the where the dark areas are. So I'm just gonna make sure there's some dark and some light areas. So it's wetter up here, so it's spreading a little more. Real dark area here. I'm looking at a reference of a tree, but mine is not gonna end up looking like that at all, so just to know where the lights and the darks are. Okay, so here's my, my uh, blend of all three colors. So I'm really gonna go in now that this is still wet, and I'm just choosing the very darkest areas where I think that the it's gonna be really dark on that tree. The, where the branches go up, Got a shadow, just the underside of these bunches of leaves. A little bit over here. It's so wet over there that it didn't really stick. And this is pretty bright over here. But you can't get bright without dark, so. This is my three mix, my mix of three. I'm gonna have to mix up more dark. That's a bummer. I really liked that color. But that's okay, because if I have to mix up a new one, it'll be slightly different, and that always makes it interesting. I like it when the colors are slightly different. I've had questions before of, well, how do you get the exact same color? I almost never do, and honestly, I'm not usually too unhappy about that, because colors in nature are rarely exactly the same, so um, I'm fine with it. So as it dries, I'm just, this is a just a wet on wet technique. I'm just gonna continue to go in. I don't want it to be too saturated, so I'm not adding water. I'm just adding leaves and uh, trying to keep the dark and light areas matched to where they were before, just using different shades of green. And then I will go back at the end and add some yellow to the very brightest areas and that will kind of sit on top. All right, so while this is wet but not too wet, I am gonna go and get the brightest yellow, which right now is a little diluted with green, so I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow. A little here, okay. Um, Because one thing that with watercolor, as long as it's wet, if you put that really bright color on top, it is going to dry and pull up a, a real bright um, light. It's not like adding it on top of acrylic or gouache or anything like that, but what it does is it, um, it literally makes it look like a highlight. So in all these areas that I was thinking of where the light would be hitting these bunches of leaves, I'm just going in with some real thick yellow and I'm adding in the highlight on top of that bunch of trees, that bunch of leaves. All right, I'm gonna mix up some more of my darkest dark. I'm just gonna mix it right here in my blue. I don't have a lot left. I think a lot of people stop painting too soon uh, and say, oh, it's fine, it's done. And I think kind of the difference sometimes is to stand back and look at it, let it dry a little bit, don't overdo it. And then, you know, go back in because watercolor can look really washed out if it's not, um, if it doesn't have enough layers. I think layering those color, the, the darks in really makes a difference. I want to add some more uh, brownish color, um, and even this is even though this is supposed to be uh, purple, I think a blue and a red combo would be good uh, to get me some brown. So, okay, so I'm gonna go in with to my uh, trunk and my branches 
Here's my branch here. I'm doing, uh, I'm using the brush to get a thicker lines um, by pushing down. Just using water to soften the edges a little bit so that it doesn't look so quite so harsh. Um, blend it into the tree. Uh, now I'm going to take that same color and I'm just going along the bottom of the tree down here, kind of thinking of it like a pen, like if I was going to outline my tree with a pen. Looking at smaller areas of darkness, not as widespread. Like maybe the branches are poking through. Be careful not to put it in the, any of the yellow, because that's not where it would be. It would be under the yellow. If you do something you don't like, you just take it out with water. But this makes this red and blue made an incredible dark, really. Um, it's very inky, and I love it. I didn't even put any yellow in it. The yellow makes it more brown, but just the red and the blue is almost black. If you put too much paint down, as you can see, you'll start to see, you know, the paper underneath, which isn't ideal. I'm go activate some of my darker greens and pull those into the blacks so it's not as rough of a transition. Thanks for listening and watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and tap that little bell so that you can be notified when I have more videos. It really helps uh, new YouTubers like myself. If you subscribe and like, and there's going to be more tutorials on watercolor mixing in this series coming up. So I really hope to see you comment, uh, leave comments about what you would like to see in my YouTube channel, and I will be sure to answer. Bye!